Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Um, and part two of Noelle coloring page. She is available in my Etsy shop right now. And um, I know on the last video I talked about how I had um, done the background first and I was not happy and I wasn't going to do that again because I got little bits of stuff all over her skin. Well, I'm going to do the background. I'm going to do the background next. Um, even though there's still some areas that um, don't have any pencil on them, I am going to be brave and do the background next. And my reasoning is that her hair is light and, um, well, light ish. And I want the light to be coming in and, and catching the, her, the, the hair strands and so forth. And if I do the hair first and the background last, I'm going to get some um, color onto the hair. And I don't want that. So I'm going to do the background first. And then we're going to overlay the color of the hair on top of the page. And hopefully that avoids that that will avoid that problem. Um, let's see, how far out of frame am I here? Um, I'm about a, I'm about a, <laughs> a quarter of an inch um, out of frame up top there. I think I'm going to let that go. Uh, I'm not going to do anything in that quarter of an inch. <laughs> That's not showing on camera um, that you won't, that you'll have to see or that will be, you know, um, I don't think it'll be too bothersome. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do, um, we're going to use gelatos. We're going to use some colored pencil. We're going to use some oil pastels, some watercolor. We're just pretty much going to throw everything at this background. And um, hopefully it will come out. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes you think it's going to work and then you're just not happy. Okay, so somewhere around here I have misplaced my... Oh, good grief. Oh, wait. There it is. My circle template. Okay, so this is my trusty circle template that I absolutely love. Ooh, that's giving me some, <laughs> hmm, that's giving me some, I don't know, that, that, that could be kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to take my circle template. This one came from um, Artist Loft in, uh, from Michaels, it's Artist Loft from Michaels. And what I'm going to do, because I'm on this tan paper, is I'm going to put some color pencil down um, for these, um, these bokeh light effects. And I'm going to put some color pencil down first. Now this is, uh, something new that I'm trying and I, I tested it out and I think it's going to work out really well, but you never know. It, it sometimes it's, <laughs> it's scary to do something new. Okay. But because it's on tan paper, um, if I, just go over the um, the bright circles that are on here. They're they're not going to show up the way I as much as I want them to show up. So I'm going to come in with my um, circle template and see if I can find. There it is. So I'm going to use my pale sage. And I'm literally, I'm going to try and put down as smooth and even a layer of color pencil here as I can. And this is going to keep um, this circle pretty light. We're going to go over it with some other things uh, later because I don't want it super bright, but I do want it to stand out. So, crossing my fingers. You can't see it, but I am. Uh, 
Okay, there's one. Let's do... Let's do this one. And it doesn't have to go right on top of what I've done. It can go anywhere. You don't, in fact, let's just do that. Let's make up our own and go just in another spot. So this one's going to be sky blue light. And, and really, once we put the color over the top of them, um, it's going to really mute down and change these colors. Um, the reason I'm using them is more because I don't want super duper bright white um, more than I want it to be the color blue. I just want something a little bit more muted. It's funny, that circle does not look round to me. kind of a half and kind of let it just fade away into these pine thingies. <laughs> Don't you love how I make up my own words? Do I want any more? Do I want any more? I want... Um, all right, let's do... Maybe something small right there. Let's do blue since we did the, the pale sage. If you want to color it while the circle template is still up there, um, you absolutely could do that too. Just color inside the... Oh, I made that one almost right on top of the other one. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna do one more small one down here. Sage. So when I go to put the gelatos on, it's going to um, just tint this a, a tiny little bit, but it's really not gonna, these are gonna stand out quite bright, I think. Um, and it won't be until I put the, uh, the oil pastel on top that it's really going to darken it up. That's okay. That's, that's what we want. Something about the sound of these brushes in this jar, I, I really like. I don't know why. It's kind of like the same as the sound of colored pencils clicking together in your hand. I know, I'm weird. Okay, so I'm going to use Iced Pear, Blue Moon, and Blue Topaz to start with. Those will be the gelato base, um, basically. And really the only reason I'm putting um, oil pastels on top of this is because there's a, oh, I wonder if I could use blueberry. You know, I might have to pull the blueberry out. We might not even, <laughs> sorry, talking to myself. Might not even, I didn't even think about the blueberry color. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start with iced pear. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> try to do this in such a way that you can see because I know I'm not flat. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Don't want to get... Okay, let's do some down here. And I think that's good enough for that one. And we have just rubbing them onto my Caran d'Ache palette. All right, this is Blue Moon. Now, I'm going to try and slow down here because um, I get a little overly excited and I, I don't want to get, I don't want to, um, I don't want to mess up. So see how it it's kind of tints it a little bit, but it's still staying really, really bright as opposed to some of these others that I didn't put any pencil over and they're going to just tint over with this, um, with these gelatos. All right, my arm is probably just going to be in the way and I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I could put this down. Maybe I'll do that. Um, let me reset this. Um, I'm going to reset the camera. I'm going to put it at a at an angle the way I did it before, but at least then you'll be able to see what I'm doing better. I think that'll work better. Okay, let's try this. Um, the coloring looks a little bit off, just slightly off, but I think it'll be better for you to be able to really see what I'm doing. Not that you guys haven't seen me do this a thousand times before. All right, let's uh, <clears throat> let's move to a little of the uh, blue topaz. So now we're just going to go all over everything and not worry about those little circles. If we really want more when we're finished, we can always put more in at the end. And I'm just using the same brush and switching back and forth. It's the colors are close enough that there's another reason this white hat I didn't want um, to get gelatos on top of the white flicks of fur that I'm going to apply. So we do this first and then that colored pencil will go over the top. Do some of the blue topaz.
Okay. So now, um, let's do some, let's stop dropping our pencils, please. Um, I'm debating on, you know what, I'm not going to do that. What am I going to do? We're going to go next to the, um, all right, so I've got um, a sapphire blue oil pastel. But that idea that came into my head was, wait, what about, isn't there a, gelato color called blueberry. That's satellite. Blueberry. Alright. So I'm curious. I'm going to take this blueberry. Okay, so the blueberry gelato is um, a little bit more um, like, aqua, I don't want to say aqua colored. Um, it's not quite as navy, if that, if that makes any sense. There's a, li there's a little bit more green in the blueberry gelato. But if you don't have oil, if you don't have these um, oil pastels, then I would use the blueberry gelato. <clears throat> I'm going to clean my fingers off real quick. Uh oh, ah, ah, look, see, you can't see it. It's not in frame, but I'm being a klutz. Oh my goodness, look at that. I smudged. Okay, so that's not an issue. That flicks right off. This one, however. <laughs> Thankfully, it's on the background. Jeez Louise, got to be careful. Okay. Um, and I did get carried away because I didn't finish. So I'm going to finish this. I'm going to put some color. I get excited about stuff. It just... to tell myself to just chill the hell out. Okay. All righty, so, um, hmm, why is that bending? Moisture does bend the paper, I gotta be careful. This, my table was, for me cleaning it off, was just moist, it wasn't even wet, but it was enough moisture to make the paper curl. Okay, um, let's put this away. So now I'm going to take the oil pastel and I am going to use my finger for this part. And I'm going to spread it on here. And I'm going to go right over the top of the, um, the bits that I colored first because I want them to recede a bit. I don't want them to be super, super bright. Um, so anything that I feel like is just still too bright, I'm going to, I'm going to go over with my oil pastel. Now, surprisingly enough, these oil pastels, this brand, I can't swear for any other brand because this is the only brand I own. This brand um, seems to work really well, both on top of and underneath my gelatos. Typically, you can't put water-based material over oil-based material. But, um, as you are going to see, I am going to be putting water-based material right over the top of this, and it does not have any, it's not any problem at all. So, I have to wonder, are these truly oil pastels? I'm not sure. I can't swear one way or the other. Um, because they do clean up with soap and water. So, 
I don't know. thinking that I did not get close enough to that skin the way I want it. So I might have to take a color pencil. And I could use my teeny tiny little brush. Let's see what little tiny brush I have. Let's see if we can get closer. I don't like having, um, you know, gaps between backgrounds and, and there's something weird going on here which I don't like so that's when you break out the color pencils and you go hmm would this possibly work this is aquamarine And if you have to feather it up into what you're doing, uh, just so that there's not a strong line, then do that. Pretty well. And then these little guys are really nice for blending things as well. But it's better. There's still a weird line there, but we might be able to hide that. Okay, so now I'm going to use my white gelato. Actually, it's called coconut, not white. Because you know I can't leave well enough alone. I have to add white on top of everything. <laughs> I don't know why. And where are all of my other brushes? This one's a small brush. I think it'll work. All right, so now I'm going to come in and kind of like make a... I don't want to say a nebula, like a... What's the word? Like a, I'm gonna do like a river of of white. Like when you're looking at um, marble and it has veins of color running through it, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Debating on if this is too, if this one is too bright. I think I'm going to tone that one down. What is this satellite? That's just what I grabbed. Hmm, and I'm not happy. <laughs> don't, don't you hate it when that happens? Okay, I'm rubbing it off. And I'm grabbing the oil pastel again. That's better. I 
I know, weird. It was too light before, then it was too dark. I think I'm, I think I'm happy with that now. Um, just a little bit more white. I wish I could show you better what it looks like right now. I know the lighting is just really, really bad. Okay, so next is watercolor. And these are the, the my, uh, KJ, KJ designed by Karen at Etsy.com. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little spritz of water right there. That's all we need. And I'm going to try something different to start with. So instead of doing a lot of the, um, the little tiny white lights that I wanted on here, a little, I'm going to try and do these with the, whoops, I didn't clean that. Okay, start over. I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush and clean my fingers. Let me just clean my fingers. So I'm going to use the back of the paintbrush. Uh, so in that case, maybe I do need a little bit more water. Get the tip of the paintbrush and dip it in the watercolor paint. Come on, you worked for me before. Don't make me a liar. Okay, what's going on? Let's try a little bit more. Maybe that's what I need. A teeny a little spritz in the watercolor. So this one we want to be a little bit wetter. That's a little bit better, I think. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to do... The little white lights that I wanted with this pearly white color instead. Now, if you don't have anything like this, um, just use white pencil or or a Posca pen. Yeah, use a Posca pen if you want to. But using the back of the paintbrush gives me nice um, circles, nice round little dots. But they have that nice subtle um, silvery white. And the less paint you have on the tip, the smaller your dots will be. So spread them out. Um, do a couple of big ones. And, and then move over and add in some smaller ones. Some over here. And then we're going to add gold. All right, I think that that's enough white. I don't want 
to go too crazy. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute or two or however long it takes to dry. I don't know. I don't think it'll take very long, but I don't want to move right into the gold because I don't want to take the chance of it smearing. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, am I going to do the gold upright or flat? I guess I'll do it flat. And do I want to do gold in dots as well? That's a good question. You know what? I think we're okay. I think we're going to just move right into the gold. Because to start with, I'm just going to do um, the same dots. Um, I, I was doing them in a, uh, with a paintbrush, like a real frayed paintbrush. Um, but that does put down quite a lot more, quite a bit quite a bit more than me doing it this way. So I'm going to try this way first. And if I want to add more gold, then I will add more gold. But um, so let's try it this way first. Um, having little second thoughts on, let's see, I need to find just a, piece of paper here. Yep, that'll be fine. Okay. Away we go. So I just really wanted um, gold on this page. So I'm going to move this gold in with this, I'm going to keep it in with this iced pear kind of, it actually kind of looks pretty gold. And I'm worried about these circles because I really like everything about this background. Um, and now I'm having a second guessing on these circles. Um, the way that I'm doing the background this time, I'm not sure if I like these or not. Um, I don't want to add any more gold on until I've made a decision. So let me just think about this for a second. Maybe it's just this one. It's just both. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to do. Something about that one is bugging me. And in actuality, these don't bother me so much. It's just that one. All right. Are these dry yet? Not quite. All right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to let those dry. I don't want to screw this up. I'm going to stop the camera, let these dry and then come back. Okay, as you can see, we're back to um, upright at an angle. Um, I, I'm going to try and fix this. And I don't know if I'll be able to. It's, and it's not that it's like terrible. It's just not what I want. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to take my circle template. Actually, if I can find some more magnets, where are all my magnets? Where are Oh, here's some. Okay, so magnets help keep that circle template from moving. And then I put gelatos, white coconut gelato, on my brush. I 
don't know why I feel there's something wrong with it, but I do. So let's try that. All right, I'm going to go with that. Um, and that part of me, though, is wondering if I should. Oh, my gosh. Put a hazy. Maybe the other reason I'm not happy is because they look too perfect. Like maybe they should have rings of light around them. This one I'm afraid to mess with anymore because the... Because um, I've got those watercolor dots around it already. Here, let me show you this brush real quick. This is one of the, the craft, craft smart, craft something brushes that I got that I used before I bought my um, my good brushes that are that are linked in the description box. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but the bristles just fall. <laughs> they just fall out of these brushes now. Um, and yet the um, the short bristle stencil brushes that I um, that I have linked have never ever lost bristles. Okay, I'm not going to mess with that anymore, um, other than that I'm going to continue to do some gold. Because I really wanted what I, I really wanted more gold. So, um, those are what things look like with using the back of the um, the back of the paintbrush so I'm going to give myself a few more of those and I should probably stay with that and not mess with it anymore um, I'll show you the background that I did when I first, when I did this, um, this last time on the white paper. I was playing around and experimenting and trying to figure out um, what I wanted to do this time. And... Um, I used a brush for that. I use this brush. So this is what she looked like on white paper. And um, as you can see, quite a bit brighter. And I just couldn't get her. I mean, she looks bright and white with porcelain skin, um, which is which I guess is fine. And so if you do her on white paper, you're going to get something closer to this than this. Um, or maybe not. Maybe you're just awesome and you know what to do how to color on white paper. But anyway, um, the, sh the, um, the gold, when I did it on this background, I used a brush to apply the gold rather than doing dots like this. And part of me really likes that, and part of me doesn't. So, I'm going to just do it anyway. We're going to do it. Uh, cleaning out the brush. It had white in it from the last time I used it. White watercolor, so it's really easy to clean out. Okay. So. Whoops, I just tipped it in the wrong one. So, um... Brushes like this that are all frayed, um, when you tap them on the paper, and you want to tap really, really lightly because you don't want heavy gold. You want like, like dusted gold. Does that make sense? 
So if you tap really, really lightly, you're going to get almost like gold dust. Yeah, I like that. And I'll, I'll try and show it to you in the, um, I'll try and hold it up so you can see it shimmering. It really does. It's like putting gold dust glitter on the page. All right, let's do some down in here. So the brush is all frayed and yucky, which is perfect for this application. Just Oh, I like the way this is coming out. Need a little more water. And if you um, if you need to have a a piece of paper near you to to just test, just tap it um, before you apply it to your page to make sure that you're absolutely happy with what it's doing. I'm going to put some in front of that pesky little white. love these paints. They're so versatile. So if you turn your brush occasionally, which I hadn't been doing, but I should have been doing, um, it'll help keep those, your little dots um, more um, completely random instead of looking like you just kind of went dot 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 and if you if you touch if you keep them close together then there won't be any oops oh heavy 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 then there won't be a um then it'll look like it's a flowing glittery thing instead of a polka dotted um, thing of dots all right, I'm going to turn my paper just to make sure that I don't accidentally smear or touch what um, I've already done. So I'm just trying to remember to turn that brush. All right, I think, do I want any up here? Um, maybe just a little bit. All right, I think, I think that's good. So let's see if we can, if I can show you the shimmer. I don't know if it's showing up very well or not. Yeah, there you go. All right, so there's our um, 
there's our background. And I think, um, I don't think that took too long. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do her hair next. And uh, I mean, like now. <laughs> and and th and that'll be good. So um, let me, let's see. Just give me a second and I'll be right back. All righty. Let's start on this side so that um, I give this side just a little bit of extra time to dry. All right, so we're going to use white, beige, light umber, and espresso. And she's kind of a, I don't know if you want to call her light brown or dark blonde. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to start with white. I like the way this one is shaped, so I'm going to follow that one. Normally, I don't bother following lines um, on the hair since I can add them back in, but in this case, I kind of like the way they're going. So, all right, a little bit of Okay, let's do some beige. It's going to go really fast. All right, now the one that really does the work, the light umber and the espresso.
come in and use our espresso. Some of this over here. some blending. Um, part of me is thinking I want to go even a little, a little darker. So I'm just gonna, gonna glaze some of this light umber in here again. Just a little bit. That's good. All right, let's do this side. Well, I hope I was right when I thought that uh, her hair wouldn't turn out blue on that side of her face. Let's see. Then beige. And I'm just going to go right over the um, this. I'm not even going to worry about the... God, I wonder if I was... Yeah, you know. I could be wrong. I guess we'll find out. So now, um, light umber. And actually, I'm going to just kind of 
going to put a little bit of it in here behind where the pine thingy is going to go. You know, if I have to use um, Posca or colored pencil, what is that stuff called? Colored pencil, touch-up texture or whatever to get this, these bright highlights in her hair. I will. When I put the white on there, all it did was turn blue. Maybe if I spray it. Um, okay, bra uh, espresso. Let's do that. like well maybe it'll work hang on let's just don't jump to conclusions <laughs> All right, I think that's going to be fine. Once we get the um, the snowflake earrings white, um, that's going to make a huge difference. And um, getting the greenery around her face is going to make a huge difference. So um, I think I think it's good so far. I um, gosh, are we going to be able to get this thing done in one? more video? I think we are. Um, so really quick, I think I'm going to do her shirt um, because literally the shirt is so easy. Um, unless I want to maybe use a ruler, but I didn't use a ruler when I did it the first time because I wanted it to be kind of more organic. So um, literally all I did for this shirt was take kind of a, you don't want a super sharp um, pencil. This might even be slightly too sharp. Um, and the, the, the duller the pencil, the thicker your lines are going to be.
So literally, we're just making lines um, to show like a, um, what's the word? You know, it's like a stripey texture. It's not a striped shirt. It's a, it's a shirt with, um, woven, woven, woven stripes. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I can't think of the, the, the right description. Literally, that's that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go, um, you know, stripe, 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 stripe. And then I'm going to come in with some grays. Like maybe 70%. some shadows in. I don't know. Do you guys want to watch me do that? How about if I do this side and then you guys can do the other side by yourselves. If you're doing this on white paper, and you don't even really need to do this. You could just come in if you're working on the white paper and and maybe put in some some shadows, some shading, and um, a few uh, darker lines in the in the uh, in between the white lines. Now that's if you want it to be white. If you want her shirt to be a different color. The sky's the limit. But I wanted her her shirt to be white, her earrings to be white, and her hat to have white on it. So Let's go with, let's go with 30% cool gray.
and they don't have to all be exactly um, the same either. And then maybe I'll use Like I said, we'll do a couple of uh, darker ones as well. Right in here. That's it. Um, yeah, I think that that'll, that'll be just fine. If you really want to do some more shading, um, maybe like a 10% cool gray. If you, if you didn't want it to be too white. Actually, 10% cool gray would be a pretty color too, if you want light. And, but you want to be able to work on the white paper. Use the gray. But really, that's all I'm going to do for um, for her shirt. Um, and I'll do the other side off camera. I don't think you guys need to see it twice. It's super simple. So, all right. So there we go. That's um, I'm. I'm, I'm happy with the background. That's the, that's, that's the best one, the one that I'm most happy with of the, um, I won't tell you how many times I've played around with different techniques for what I wanted to do there. Um, so until I see you guys on the next one, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Love to you all. Bye.